What's up Sushi Squad? We back again for some more Genshin Impact and today we're going to be doing a video highlighting Hu Tao, talking about how you're going to build the character and just how overpowerful this character is. Like, <coughs> excuse me, we've teased the idea that power creep is a thing in this game, which obviously it is. You know, the newest character is slowly going to end up making the older characters less and less relevant. Well, with Hu Tao, she kind of comes out and just dumps all over that. Like, she's not doing a power creep. She's doing a power sprint, dude. Like, she is single-handedly stronger than Deluc and one of the most powerful five-star characters in the game. Very easy to build as well, just because HP actually scales extremely well on her. And, you know, we'll kind of get into all of her artifacts and all the uh, different traits and stuff that I'm going to be using on her. For right now, I'm just going to be trying to solo uh, this with her just to give you guys a quick example of some of her damage when she's on her own. Obviously, I am still using the uh, two Geo characters in my party, so we are getting that Geo resonance. And normally, you know, this is like the most not really the best example of like the amount of damage that she can end up doing i'm just trying to show you guys okay when she's just on her own what are we doing here right i mean the other thing oh great never mind there's a fire mage here so this is not a good example at all <laughs> okay so i'm going to use other abilities now if you'll pardon me uh but i'll kind of show you guys like how you're gonna use the character what other abilities you're going to end up using and stuff like that uh, most of all, she's going to be focused on her charged attacks. It just is going to end up being where most of her damage ends up coming from, especially when you're using uh, her E ability or her right trigger ability, which basically, like Xiao, uh, makes it so that her attacks are going to all end up doing pyro damage. Uh, it also is going to end up draining a bit of her health. She's kind of a... She kind of teases the idea of being kind of a blood warrior uh, in that you drain your health with a lot of your abilities and the less health you have, the more damage she'll end up doing, right? So the way that her abilities work and, you know, her controls work and everything like that, she's actually got a pretty cool combo of attacks. Uh, and when you end up finishing the combo at any point, she's also got kind of a custom animation for uh, every single combo end. So that's really interesting. Fischl kind of has the same thing. Um, and then your charge attack is going to be pretty much the exact same as Zhang Ling, which is a good charge attack for sure. But things are going to change as soon as you end up using your E ability. So uh, when you're using your E ability, it's going to change all your attacks to Pyro, so similar to Xiao. You can see we're doing pretty good damage just with a Vaporize, right? But if I end up uh, doing a charge attack, we dash through enemies like Xiao does. And uh, I didn't actually get it to proc, but... You will also end up getting um, uh, uh, kind of similar to Child's Riptide. So we'll actually get that flower icon right there on the enemy. And that's actually a damage over time going to slowly do, you saw right there, 10k damage just passively. That was probably because it was a crit. But either way, that's going to end up being a really, really good ability. And you're going to want to try and tag as many enemies as you can with that while you're in the midst of battle. Uh, she also has her dash the, the dodge animation of it literally just makes her a specter, so we can use that to actually dash behind enemies. Uh, it doesn't really work on big enemies. Very, very similar to Zhao's dash ability, so whether you have Zhao or not, uh, he kind of works the same, where you can dash behind smaller enemies, no problem, but as soon as you deal with a bigger enemy or a shield enemy, it doesn't actually let you. So you can see you can just... Lots of survivability on this character just because of all of that, so it's actually quite cool. Um, and then there's going to end up being her ultimate ability, which you saw me kind of cast two seconds ago. Look at this damage, Jesus Christ. Uh, which is, she throws out a ghost, and then it does some healing and stuff, and, uh, does a bit of damage. And if you're at, uh, 50% health or under with Hu Tao, I don't know why I swapped off of her, um you'll actually do more damage so we can get into the build of the character and stuff like that and then i'll try and show you at uh, i guess a better example of her power with my full party uh but as far as her attributes and everything this is what i've got on her so i got 18k health uh attack at 1200 my buddy actually had uh like way more attack but a lot less health and i was doing way more damage than him so prime example that hu tao scales very very well on hp and you'll be very surprised to see the artifacts that i end up using uh my crit rate's at 60 percent, so that's okay and then the crit damage is over 200 percent because of the fact that this is another character where her crit damage scales as you ascend her so she's gonna get more and more crit damage which is nutty uh i'm actually using this Staff of Homa on her, which 
I know free to play players are gonna be like, what? Uh, this is pretty much the best weapon on her, custom designed for her. That said, you can very easily use Deathmatch, which is from the Battle Pass. Uh, Crescent Pike would probably end up working quite well as well. And if you just use her for her ult, maybe Energy Recharge or Favonius, I mean, I, I don't, you know, the Elemental Mastery can end up being a really good one as well. Even Dragon Spine Spear could probably end up being pretty good. Uh, I was originally using uh, Deathmatch on her. You know, you pretty much just use the same default best spears for every character. Uh, but then I ended up having Staff of Homa on my Zhongli. And then basically I was able to swap it onto her. And she gets much more benefit from it because uh, of the fact that it's got the... Uh, substats, which is the uh, HP increased by 20%, uh, provides 0.8% of the wielder's max HP into damage, and then when the wielder's HP is at 50%, which never happens to Zhongli, so the spear was kind of useless, uh, the attack bonus is increased by an additional 1% of max HP, and uh, on, on top of the 0.8, I guess, uh, either way, she does Lots and lots of damage for all of that. Uh, I don't have any constellations, just to let you guys know. And then the artifacts, let's move on to those. So the set bonus that I use is just the fourth piece witch set. So that's going to be the full pyro damage. Uh, I have seen some really, really nice builds with her. If you're just using her for an elemental burst build, you definitely can. So you would just use two witch, uh, two noblesse, and that would be... That can end up being really, really powerful, especially if you're not like me and you actually use food and buffs of other characters and stuff, because I don't really care about any of that stuff. I am very casual with this game, uh, despite the fact that I know how to play it properly with all the meta and stuff like that. I, I just don't bother with food because I've never really cared for crafting items for temporary buffs just in video games in general. But anyways, you can see the stats are pretty good. Uh, so let's start with the flowers. So I actually ended up getting some really, really good artifacts with uh, who tell i don't even know how i got this lucky this is probably some of the best artifacts that i've gotten on any character uh the thing is hu tao kind of is the same as uh zhongli where if you have hp on an artifact it's actually not a bad thing because of the way that she scales with uh you know more hp equals more damage with her e ability and uh, her elemental skill and uh, elemental burst which we'll get into those in a bit but you can see this one ended up being really, really good. Uh, this one also ended up being really good as well. And, you know, again, having that HP is not a problem with her. Uh, I was actually working on this one at first, which could potentially end up being better depending on what it rolled into. But I ended up going for this one instead just because it ended up having that 12% crit rate. Uh, and then this is the odd one out. So this is where <laughs> in order to build her uh, like most ideal you're actually going to have an hp hourglass uh because you can have an uh, hp on your hat as well but i would actually recommend that depending on the build that you're going for depending on the weapons that you're using you can kind of do a bit of a hybrid build with her um by having HP as the main stat on some of her gear, and it's going to actually make her slap like crazy. I mean, this one you can see, again, 25% crit damage is really, really good. Um, I have a buddy of mine who's got like full HP on like everything that he possibly can, so I'd be really curious to see uh, if his Hu Tao is going to end up doing a lot of damage with her ult and stuff, but generally speaking, uh, you kind of still build her towards DPS as you would with any character, but having HP is not a problem. Okay, and that actually makes it a lot easier to build her as a character. Uh, so then, of course, you always want to have this, uh, the goblet, to be pyro damage just because of the fact that uh, she, you know, she's not going to end up being built very well towards like a physical damage build or anything like that just because of her uh, elemental skill, obviously giving all of her attacks uh, the, um, uh, the fire pyro proc. So don't don't bother doing that always end up going for pyro this is just the best one that i have in slot for a uh, pyro buff which okay whatever uh and then the hat i'm actually using a crit rate hat because i'm not using a crit rate spear and you can see that the stats on this are not ideal they're okay uh ideally i would want something like this but that would require me to have a weapon in slot that would end up compensating by having that extra crit rate that's why i personally uh if you can't get the staff of homa i would recommend deathmatch just because it's going to compensate by giving you enough crit rate that you don't really need to have it as a main stat on anything and literally if i swap over to like it, it, let me show you an example right here so Crit rate 60, uh, you know, crit damage uh, 207. If I swap this, and then I swap this, 
very very similar stats in fact my crit rate goes up a bit so very very similar the difference obviously is that my health is going to be considerably lower and my attack is considerably lower just because this is a five star weapon but my point is that you can very easily just building this character is not as much of a problem as you would think so anyways constellation i have none her constellations are insane though if you want to well, there's Cash whaling it for her C6 or being a dolphin and going for her C1. I'm being very, very cheap with this game now. I'm probably not going to end up uh, spending tons and tons of money to end up getting constellations because now that we know power creep is a thing, it means that this character, though extremely powerful right now, is going to be irrelevant in a couple months. So anyways, uh, the first constellation, if you want to have her as your main, I would say is probably required because it makes it so that Hu Tao's charge attacks when you have her E ability, that is when you have, you know, all of your pyro stuff and you're dashing through enemies, uh, it's actually not going to drain any stamina. So especially if you're early on in the game and you don't have a lot of stamina, generally speaking though, for me, I've got max stamina in the game currently. So if I have my stamina at all the way, everything ends up usually being dead before I run out of stamina or run out of the ability. But, uh, you know, you can go for that if you want. Uh, the Constellation 2 increases Blood Blossom damage by an amount equal of 10% of Hu Tao's max HP at the time the effect is applied. So uh, this, uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is explained very poorly, but basically is going to end up taking a certain amount of her health uh, to end up casting it. But then it's also going to do additional damage based on your max health, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but then again, maybe because it's the Constellation, it's just increasing it based off 10% of her max HP. Uh, but the fact that it says based on the time uh, the effect is applied would imply to me that this would have the most benefit when she's at max health only. And then from there and further down, when she's got less and less HP reserve, uh, it's going to end up doing less and less damage, I, I would assume. So then, you know, obviously this just levels up one of her skills by three levels. Um, Constellation 4 is upon defeating an enemy affected by a blood blossom. So that's the uh, kind of similar to Child's Riptide that I mentioned where you have the... Uh, the fire flower on an enemy uh, the blood blossom that Hu Tao applied herself all nearby allies in the party excluding Hu Tao uh, will have their crit rate increased by 12% for 15 seconds now this is a constellation because one of her abilities already does this effect but the difference is that it goes up from 8 seconds to 15 seconds so not really I mean it's still really really good because it means that a lot of your side characters won't need to have as much crit rate just because that's a sweet little extra percent of 12% uh, it doesn't apply to her though so keep that in mind this increases more level and then her c6 which is absolutely cracked <clears throat> excuse me triggers when hu tao's hp drops below 25 percent or when she suffers a lethal strike so <clears throat> excuse me literally makes her invincible uh hu tao will not fall as a result of the damage sustained additionally for the next 10 seconds all of her elemental and physical resistance is increased by 200 percent, and her crit rate is increased by 100 percent uh and her resistance to interruption is greatly increased the effect triggers automatically when hu tao has one hp left it can only occur once every 60 seconds which most battles are only going to last uh like 60 seconds anyways so you'll probably be able to use this from cooldown within each battle and just it makes her a god basically but that is literally spending thousands of dollars so is it worth it if you've got thousands of dollars sure so moving on to her talents she's actually uh, whereas with most characters you would level up a certain talent before another she's actually one of those rare characters where you're gonna want to try and keep all of her abilities as even as possible level up whichever one you want i just don't have the talent books frankly but i happen to have a lot of the boss materials because i haven't used them on any other character uh so this is just going to end up being her basic attacks uh being stronger charge attack plunge attack her charge attack ends up scaling the most uh, as far as i know so ideally her end game is literally just spamming her charge attack that's why her constellation one is actually so good um <clears throat> now moving on to her uh e ability her elemental skill this is going to be paramita papleon something i don't i don't know how to pronounce it so i don't care so this increases Hu Tao's based attack uh based on her max hp at the time of entering the state <clears throat> excuse me uh attack bonus i don't know what's going on why i have this stupid phlegm in my throat stupid frog in my throat uh, attack bonus gained this way cannot exceed 400% of Hu Tao's base attack. Okay. Converts attack damage to pyro damage, which cannot be overridden by any other elemental infusion. Uh, charge attacks apply the blood blossom effect to enemies hit and increases Tao's 
uh, Hu Tao's resistance to interruption, so enemies won't be knocking her around as much, which is pretty cool. Uh, then the Blood Blossom itself, so enemies affected by Blood Blossom will take Pyro damage every four seconds. This damage is considered an elemental skill damage, which is really good because it means that it can constantly be proccing Pyro, so you can use that with other characters very effectively. Um, each enemy can only be affected by one Blood Blossom at a time, and its duration might only be refreshed by Hu Tao herself, so uh, I guess... I guess it just means not another character or just not another Hu Tao, like only yours or something, right? And then uh, ends when its duration is over or when she leaves the battlefield or has fallen. So basically, if you toggle off of her, you're going to end up losing the pyro effect of the elemental skill. So it's kind of the same as Razor's where it's a little bit of a greedy ability. Then her ultimate. Now, this thing can end up scaling pretty crazy. So, commands a blazing spirit to attack, dealing pyro damage in a large AoE. Upon striking the enemy, generates a percentage of Hu Tao's max HP. This effect can be triggered up to five times, based on the number of enemies hit. So, you gotta have at least five enemies there to end up having the absolute maximum amount of damage out of it. Uh, if Hu Tao's HP is below or equal to 50% uh, when the enemy is hit, both damage and HP regeneration are increased. So it's pretty cool. You can't really use her for a healer, though. Uh, and then when Papa Baba state is triggered by Guide of the Afterlife ends, all allies in the party, excluding Hu Tao herself, uh, will have their crit rate increased by 12% for 8 seconds. So again, beautiful. Very, very powerful. So uh, you could just pop her out, use her E, swap off of her, and then all your other characters would have 12% HP or 12% crit rate for a little bit, as far as my understanding. When Hu Tao's HP is equal to or less than 50%, her pyro damage is increased by 33%. Uh, and then her other passive is just that she can end up cooking food, which, okay, whatever. What? Uh, so anyways, let me actually show you guys a more realistic example of what I would possibly end up doing. Let me actually go for this guy. These guys are a little bit more resistant. And then we could end up fighting a world boss or something like that uh, just to kind of show you what the true potential of the character is. Uh, but what I would basically be doing is popping my Zhongli shield. You're going to want to use a shield character if possible um, just because it's going to end up making her that much stronger. And you can just see the, the shredding damage that she ends up doing. It's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, that could also just because I have... Uh, the Zhongli shield, so she's got a lot more survivability, but it also means that the elemental resistance of the enemy is going to go down, uh, and then you're also going to end up doing more damage based on taking damage with the shield and blah blah blah. I, I talk about all that in my Zhongli uh, tutorial or anything like that. Okay, so let's fight the big old ice flower. This will be a nice little example, and I mean, the thing is, guys, again, if you consider the fact that I'm... Whoops, why am I using ice? Consider the fact that I'm not using any food items or anything like that, and you can really start to see just how much damage you can possibly end up doing with this character. Because you can do so, so much more. Let's see if we get a crit. Ah, that was not a crit. I, I've actually been able to do, without food or anything like that, uh, I've been able to do 145k with her ult, I think, so long as I ended up having uh, the enemy hit by uh, ice or something, you know, so that we get an elemental reaction. Uh, otherwise, her charge attacks can end up doing like, you know, 20 to 30k average for me. Uh, and then her ult without elemental reaction is going to do 30k and up usually. So very, very powerful character. Slaps like a truck, slaps like a freight train, more like it. Um, but anyways, that should end up covering it today. So I'll, I'll do uh, uh, like I'll end up fighting child and other bosses and stuff like that. But I'm probably going to end up doing that on stream just to give you guys, you know, something else to look forward to <clears throat> which i'll probably end up actually doing that stream today at some point and then it'll go public tomorrow with some proper timestamps. but i mean i didn't really like the character at first honestly speaking but oh my god she is powerful and honestly i probably prefer her a lot more than ganyu that's for sure like ganyu's an era character where i just got lucky and got her right away and then i used her just because of how powerful she is and it turned out to be perfect because now i can actually use her with hu tao and do some nutty damage anyways Thanks for watching. Hopefully you found this video helpful, gamers. And if you did, smash like, sub for more, because I'll cover uh, my other characters as well. I still got to do my albedo tutorial. Uh, but anyways, you can end up buying the merch if you want to support the channel and have yourselves a fantastic day. Dino, and stay up, gamers.